he truly is a godly husband and a godly leader, making sure that we stay focused on God and that we speak his truth. Okay, I'm gonna sit down. Yeah. I need you to hold the camera. We are day four of post treatment. And anywhere from day five to day seven in the past is when I've started having the really, really high fevers and really, really bad side effects. Um, Leading up to it, there's usually stabbing pains and um, mm -hmm. that, that right there. Um, so it's kind of making us nervous because for the first few days after treatment, I'll be perfectly fine. Like y'all just saw me, like I feel good. And then all of a sudden, and like even now, the pain is already gone again. Like it is a roller coaster. I feel perfectly fine. And I'm like, oh, I, I feel normal. I'm okay. Like other than the dull aches, which I can ignore. And then stabbing pain will come in the liver or the tumor or my back. Um, and the stabbing pain usually only lasts about maybe 10 to 20 seconds, but then, and then everything's fine again. But one of the things I've noticed about this time that's a little different is the pain that I experience is a lot more frequent. Um, I would say that I probably have some kind of post-treatment related symptoms at least once every 15 to 20 minutes. Right now, my symptoms are including the stabbing pain either in my, uh, either in my liver or the kidney, the tumor area, um, or the back. It's including severe cramping in my stomach. Um, it's including leg cramps really bad. Which is new. Yeah, new Relatively new. Yeah, leg cramps in both my thigh and in my calf. Um, it's but including headaches that are really weird, the headaches, like, they will start as headaches and very quickly turn into migraines. Um, like I gotta eat, otherwise it, it's gonna get soggy. <laughs> the um, the headaches, I'll start the headache and it will last for like maybe a couple minutes and then it turns into migraine and I like have to close my eyes and like shut out the lights and noises bother me. But the migraine part only lasts for about a minute and then it disappears and I'm okay again. So like the entire headache process lasts maybe five minutes with one minute of it being like migraine symptoms and then the other four minute being um, regular headache. I'm also getting really, really dizzy, really lightheaded. Um, and there's a lot of tension in my neck, like almost like I've got a pinched nerve or something. But all of these symptoms come on really, really sudden and happen very frequently. And so, oh, and the hot flashes. So yeah. So anyways, it's just been making me kind of nervous and I've really been having to fight the enemy and like speak God's truth and God's word into our situation um, and speak healing into existence because it is very, it's a lot of side effects right now in a way and in a frequency that I've never experienced them before. And if we start having our post-treatment fevers like we usually get. Which usually occur after about five days, five to seven days. Yeah, so we're right at that mark. Um, I can't have surgery. They have to postpone the surgery and we really want to get home and really want this trip to be done. And so... So the thing is about this treatment cycle, uh, they changed up her drug regimen. They took her off of... Nevo Ippy, a well, dole. They, they took her off of the Ippy and now it's just Nevo. Mm -hmm. and, but since it's only one, they increased the dosage. So it would make sense that the larger dosage... are kind of more severe. And we're hoping, praying prayerfully, that uh, the Ippy is what causes the fevers because there's there was no way to know beforehand like, right it's just we wait and see what happens and how my body reacts so yeah. we also wait and pray that 103 degree fevers are not higher because holy crap well our 103 <laughs> point, 103.8 is the highest that it's gotten yeah so um, almost 104 which is you know one degree away from brain scrambling i believe <laughs> It's 105 that the brain starts to scramble. Yeah. I think so. Kind of like a cooking an egg. You know. But basically, if my temperature gets to 104, we have to rush to the hospital. And so it's like... Now, first we throw you in a tub of ice water. Then well, we, we rush to the hospital. We get me cool. But if my fever gets to 104, then it's an immediate hospital trip. And so like 103.8, <coughs> like that was our max last time. And I really, really hate going to the hospital. And so I was like and begging. All they, and I was all they do, begging Darren. I was like, no, it's not there yet. We, we can do this at the house. Like, no, 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 no. But the thing is, all they do is they take blood work and go, 
well, we can't give you any drugs, and we all we can do is monitor your condition for about two days until the, the cultures, the blood cultures come back to make sure that you're you not going, you don't have an infection, or, or you're going sepsis, sepsis or, or whatever. So literally, it's just kind of like, all right, well, we have a 103.8 degree fever. What are they going to do? Give us Tylenol. No, no, no. They're not going to give us Tylenol. They're going to make us wait, wait two days, and then give us Tylenol. No, they give me Tylenol in any time to try to keep it down. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, but, but that's, that's, that's all they, they do. do. It's just Tylenol. And Tylenol so, and you can't eat anything. Yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the other thing. You can't eat anything for two days. So <sighs> so we're like, all right, if all you're going to do is give me Tylenol and this has happened to me before. And I so can do this know, at all. Like the chances of me having an infection are very, very slim, like less than 1%. Right. So we'll let's just, just stay home and chug a bunch of Tylenol and maybe be able to sleep in my own bed, drink water when I want to, which is obviously going to help me heal, oh, eat when I want that's to, which is obviously going to be able to give me strength and be able to cuddle with my dogs who make me feel better. Um, and Darren actually is able to sleep since he's not stuck in a hospital chair trying to take care of me. And I get to work. Yeah, so. And make money and not have to not make money because. Because anytime he has to take off work or run these trips for Texas, he goes unpaid. Like it's, yeah, it's, like, just a, a, it's good medical leave and the fact that like my he job still has secure. his job and it's secure, but that's a lot of paycheck, like a big chunk of our paycheck that we're missing yeah, each we time we have to take off a day of work. And so yeah. that's another reason that we want to get back to Vicksburg so quickly. Um, Darren's job is really, really fortunate right now. He's even able to work from home right now. Praise and so God. he can take care of me when I'm having my flare ups and work and make money. But if we're in the hospital where Wi-Fi is sketchy, your doctors are coming in and out. Or and they don't, want me, they don't want me working that either because right, you're gonna be distracted. I'm distracted with fooling with sensitive documents. And right. it's kind of like, eh. Same thing for here in Texas, you know, like he has to take off work and we have to travel. And so all of that is unpaid. And so each time, like we're going on two weeks, like we're gonna be missing an entire paycheck this month because yep. we've stayed by the time we get back home, if everything goes perfectly, and we and, don't have to say anything extra. And I've got to pay extra to make up for the insurance payments that are not coming out of my checks. Yep. So mm -hmm. that's, you know, part of what your, your work covers you is like, hey, you know, we paid part of your insurance for you because you work for us. You're not working? Yeah. Pay your insurance. <laughs> so, so yeah, even though my insurance is great, my insurance costs go up and I actually owe money for taking these trips, which is... And not everything is covered by insurance, too. And so we have that on well, our expense. Let's not talk about that, please. Let's, so, not, yeah. let's not bring that into our lives right now. It's let's just, not curse us. It's just a lot. There's a lot of there's a lot of money issues, and we haven't even touched that with this these videos yet. So I'm sure at one at some point we can we can kind of deep dive into them. But right now, that you kind of give a nice overview of what it looks like. What do you tell me? The power of life and death is in the tongue. Thank you. We are okay. supposed to speak truth, speak life. I am healed in the name of Jesus. There you go. And right, see, take this camera. You, take, take this camera and stop talking. This is, it's my turn to talk. It's my turn to be on camera. This is why I love my husband because in times that it's easy to be really negative or just focus on the bad things that are happening. He holds me accountable and he truly is a godly husband and a godly leader, making sure that we stay focused on God and that we speak his truth into I try. our life. I try. We, you know, and we struggle with that. I mean, you literally just saw me be negative and like, okay, well, here's what's gonna happen next. Um, I do the same thing, and you jump all over. Yeah, yeah. We, <laughs> I have a I have a very very negative personality. It's how I how I I, I attack humor with humor, and it's this very dark humor. It's just it's how I was raised. It's how I grew up. It's the type of humor and stuff that I I went to yeah. went to as a as a kid and as a you know young adult. And I have infiltrated my mind with all kinds of deep dark nasty things. And we're working our way back. And that. now I'm trying to be a better Christian and be a fill myself fill myself with stuff that does not that's not so dark and dreary and God negative. tells us to take captive every thought turn it towards good things true things noble things things that are right lovely um, and that's really 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 hard for me oh yeah well I mean it's hard for anybody especially in a situation that is so negative I mean this is stage four cancer let's be real like it's not a happy situation it's not a situation that's like oh yeah we're we're great over here like that's not our reality right now yeah. And so it it is a challenge. I know I've had a lot of people tell me and tell us like, oh, y'all are handling this so well. Like there's, <laughs> y'all are handling this so well. Y'all are so positive about everything. And we have to work really, really hard to be- To maintain it. To, to be positive and to have a positive outlook. But that positive outlook doesn't just come from us being positive. That outlook comes from us focusing on God and us focusing on what his word says and knowing that his word is the ultimate truth and that the enemy is a liar. We live in a fallen, broken world and- It's tragic, it and sucks. And that is why I'm battling cancer right now. Not because of anything God has done, because God only gives good things. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he comes to give life and life more abundantly. He, capital H-E. Yeah, capital H-E. 
but Jesus not, not comes. Lowercase H-E. Jesus has come to give us life and life more abundantly. There you go. <laughs> there we go. And I have a degree in English, so I I, I, I stumble over <laughs> word uh, things. It, it, yeah, it gets on our nerves. All of all of this to say, you literally just got a real life example of the fact that no, we're not always positive. No, I'm not always okay. I'm not always positive. But Especially what I, me. But what I never want to do is stay in that negativity or allow myself to succumb to that negativity look upwards and have him pull you up yeah so that is that is our little encouragement for the day night whatever yeah.